Hello, hello. This video is to touch on a couple of subjects and it's all about empowerment because that's what brings us back to everything in life okay so everything in life brings us back to that one subject and that's self-empowerment from within not from outside not um, some kind of acknowledgement from the peer groups you know and here is the blue jay he is getting himself a piece of bread <laughs> so cute. Um, it is about empowerment from within that means if you feel really like you are a deserving person that you are a good person and that you did something good not just made money you know Richard Berman is my red flag with this but Richard Berman he can become a better person if he really wanted to I have never been somebody who doesn't know how to love so for me it is extremely difficult to understand and that's also one of the subjects that has always fascinated me that's why I studied psychology in different schools at the university also in Berlin it is very good to love it's a wonderful thing and so I'm trying to help people to love more and what I mean by true love that's not romantic love okay romantic love that's plainly biological needs that's that's all it is true love is beyond all of that and if you combine biological need love or what they call romantic love if you combine these things romantic attraction with true love true love is what I mentioned before that film about the robot in that Jameson whiskey commercial by that Chinese lady this amazing filmmaker new filmmaker um, she's very promising she's gonna come up with amazing stuff I hope she's gonna make amazing science fiction films because I'm really in need to watch good science fiction films I don't like action films I'm sorry you know it's like the Arnold films they had a lot of good stuff but it was just too loaded with all this this constant machine gunning and people ah, screaming here ah, flip flap flap you know it's like no it's just it's just too much or or for example the film alien it's it's an interesting story but only when it's calm as soon as action comes into place and all this running and and this this slithering and this uh, craziness and the screams that's not that's not what i envision as a science fiction film so i want to see a film that is very very calm that doesn't have violence in it oh that's a terrible bummer for the public but um for someone like me who's into calmness and everything slow motion and like really like enjoyment and mindfulness and meditation i want to see these calm things i have visions of this all the time i wish somebody would work with me to create a science fiction film like that adam brandegis for example he used to make masks for horror movies. I don't know, he's probably still doing it. But why not turn that incredible potential of know-how of electronics and computation and robotics and, and mask building and 
fantasy and artisticness, why not combine that with a making a film that is completely an innovation, that's pure love, pure modern art. And so, yeah, that would be nice, like just something that's giving to us, not just titillating us, not just like, you know, causing the adrenaline level <coughs> to go up or causing people nervous breakdowns, which happened, you know, I'm sure Adam Brandegis has done it. So why not turn all this potential into giving? Instead of doing anti-information, do pro-information. <laughs> that would be great. Real pro-information out there. Real, nourishing, holistic information to give to people. Really giving the customer something. Not just throwing some breadcrumbs and then, gotcha, I gotcha by the balls. You know, that's not what we make any progress on. Progress is made on giving to the fullest. And not just throwing it into a bottomless pit, but really constructive giving. And it could be done in a film. I haven't seen it yet so, so far. I mean, the only film, or one of the very, very few films that I've seen is that short film by that lady. I forgot the name now again. Sarah Chung or something. She um, made an amazing film. And uh, it really stands out. That lady, she had this robot guy, I guess after her husband died or so, she must have been like 50 or 60. And she had the robot guy and she made love with that robot guy. And then the robot guy never got older. But she got old and she was like over 80, like 85 or something. And the robot guy still was making love with her. And it just, my tears just streamed. Because to me that is true love. And guess what, under that video that I made about it, I, that was like a year or two ago, I got somebody really hating me for that video. And, and that was a video that wasn't even attacking anybody. That wasn't even going against anyone's ego. I was very surprised I got it, such tremendous hate for that. And the hate was just against my looks, you know, how ugly I am, I should shut up, uh, I'm, I'm a bitch. And um, so I said, did I say something to offend your worldview and they said no I just want you to shut up and I said to him then go ahead and watch Holly Madison films and enjoy her instead right I mean there's a lot of other alternatives out there so yeah it's uh, it's very interesting all oh, this is fascinating me all of these reactions these interactions all of the stuff that's going on I when you can read between the lines, it becomes even more interesting. And all this stuff that's going on inside of people's minds, it's fascinating. I have never had such an amazing school as the last 10 years on the internet, I tell you that. I mean, for every psychologist, it is li like a free all-you-can-eat buffet out there and it's uh, it's uh, it's sometimes shocking sometimes very saddening very depressing it can cause nervous breakdowns it can cause ser serious depression but it can also empower us if we make <coughs> all of us if if we use all of this to to make us grow from within and so that requires a lot of researching, that requires a lot of looking within oneself and not shy away from it. Not have a TV on in every room, not have a radio on in every room. See, that's what they do in primal therapy when the, the first time somebody comes to primal therapy, they have to make them 
live in a motel and they tell them not to have any device on, no TV, no radio, and no mobile phone. So be like, be like collected towards themselves, towards all that stuff that wants to bubble up from underneath like a volcano. And I agree with this, but it can be overwhelming for some people. So it, it, it has to be done with very much caution. But for anyone in their households, I recommend not to be having something dazzling on all the time that is distracting the mind. You know, we should be become more focused. We should read more be more focused on one particular thing, not be so spoiled with all this ADHD aid that is in videos where they just show one scene for two or three seconds or a split second and then they move on to the next. So we need to get away from the bedazzling type of thing. We need to co collect ourselves. And anyone who has children, you know, I highly recommend taking these devices away from the kids. And listen to what Rudolf Steiner said. It's very important that when kids grow up, they need to grow up with holistic environments. They need to be stimulated with things where they actually learn from their own experience. This is also something Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about. I thought that is very important what he said. We have to give our kids a realm where they can actually make experiences, where they can make mistakes, and where they can learn. When, when I was a child, I was in, in a therapy program very similar to primal therapy, that, but that's before she knew about primal therapy. And Annalise, she had a place seller for this purpose, to do child play therapy. And she even had an extra room where we could throw like clay balls against the wall. And I had to do this several times to let my anger out. When I was six years, seven years old, I was so filled with rage, you know. So when a child is filled with rage, then something didn't go very well before that. And it is very important to create an outlet that is safe for the children, where they can really explore themselves, their minds, their, where they can let all of this pent up energy out and where they can feel safe and creative where somebody interacts with them, maybe with puppets, you know, which Annelies did. That was absolutely amazing. She has, has an absolute natural talent to interact with children and empower them from within. And that's what she did with me. I also let my anger out on a punching ball and I, and I painted a butthole on it and I spit on it and I screamed at it you butthole and I punched that punching ball as hard as I could with my punching ball gloves on, boxing gloves and it was amazing what she did for me, you know. She, I couldn't even let anybody touch me. I was, I was so shaken up on the inside. She started to pet me with a string, with a with some fabric string, and I liked that. That was okay, I could allow that. And some kids are extremely damaged and they need very, very patient, careful yeah. interaction. And not have impatient parents who just say, oh, don't be silly, or don't be, you know, don't be imagining stuff, or don't do this or this, you know. Uh, most children have a natural psychic ability to, to see way more than the adult world. And they are being crushed with this and they stop using that world of creativity very early on because of the reactions from parents and family. Oh boy, did my grandfather hate me for being creative. And he showed it. 
So all of this, I have to put all of this in. This is absolutely, all of this ties into the very same subject, is empowerment from within, you know. And those people who have a crippled amygdala or crippled functions of compassion, they are the most dangerous and they are also, they are dangerous for the world and they are dangerous for themselves. Those are the people that need to be receiving most of the help because, and as early as possible, because we don't want them to escalate into monstrous murderers or mass murderers or people who go amok like Elliot Roger. So we want to empower these people, we want to do projects like what Judy Baca is doing in LA is absolutely fantastic project and um, where they paint you know she has kids from the streets basically gang people who paint with her morals and uh, it is a fantastic project what I want to do is maybe eventually I want to involve kids that have no stimulation in, in, in art and creativity. I want to involve them into making murals, but I want them to paint their own story from scratch, their own story without some kind of um, template to give them, but just let them completely explore their own artisticness and let art rule, you know, and let people allow art to rule their lives and then everything will balance its itself out naturally so hopefully that's going to happen more and more <coughs> in this world and i hope people will do that yes and um, all of this ties back into the same subject empowerment and for those kids like elliot roger or anyone who has some kind of antisocial personality disorder or is extremely shy or is extremely afraid of other people's opinions. First of all, you know, of course, you got to keep in mind that this is all just in your head that doesn't apply to reality. It doesn't matter what other people think. It really, really doesn't matter. Man, if if we did this, I mean, we would never even make any progress if we were just afraid of other people's opinions all the time. No, but no scientist could ever proceed with anything. That's why they are often called nerds, because they, they are not looking at what is hot and what is not. They are in their own room doing their own thing. They are exploring. And if they didn't do this, we wouldn't make any progress. I mean, not just scientists, but anybody, any artist, you know, all the great art. If they looked at what other people think of them, you know how many times they would hear from someone, oh, this is not, this is Satan, or this is bad, or this is not Christian, or this is this, or this is that, or this is... This is too different, you know. So, I mean, we wouldn't even in any way make any progress in culture, science, art, music, or anything. So that's why I'm saying, you know, there's a lot of undiscovered talents out there in the world. Discover yourself and break free from what other people think. It doesn't matter. Don't even respond to those hater type of people. Don't even block them if you have to, to get them off your chest. I mean, why look at it? Why even bother? If you want to play with them, you can, but then eventually let it go. Um, teach them if you want to, but don't worry about what they say to you back, you know. When I try to teach a hater, it just installs more and more hate in them. It just, it, it, it just, yeah, often they're not at receptive at all to hear my message, you know. 
I wish they would because it would make their lives so much better particularly a lot of those people who take drugs or drink and uh, they don't want to stop doing this so when I tell them to stop doing it they all say some chill out or something I'm already chilled out I'm just trying to help you to chill out without the chill out stuff you know I mean why need chill out drugs in order to chill out you could chill out on your own and become creative and empower yourself then you don't need any enhancements uh, in form of tox toxins that are gonna be going into your liver and just making fogging your brain up and so on so so what I want to say to those kids that want to have connection with other kids and that's what it was with Elliot Roger I think more than anything else he wanted to connect because his dad t he offered to take him to a, a real expensive hooker he was he offered to pay for it even there are expensive hookers out there they will look they look real good and the better they look the more it costs so but that's not what these people really want, you know. They don't want, or uh, any rich guy, as a matter of fact, who will find someone and then the lady says, Oh, I saw you in this film. I know you got billions of dollars. Now you are my dream man just for that reason. She won't say it, but that's what she thinks. And that's what he sees right away. And so they don't want that. They don't want this. This is the same as with the hooker, you know, the expensive hooker. She will also say, I love you, because she gets paid for it. So that is not even romantic love. That's paid sex, you know. So that's nothing, basically. You know. And there's only, that if something evolves out of that, that's, that's like, the material of fairy tales, like in the poem Der Gott und die Bayadere by um, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. That's one of my most favorite poems. But that's not realistic, where the, the, the Buddha, I think, he, or some type of avatar, he goes out and he finds, he goes into a, a a bordel and he finds this beautiful girl and she does what she is paid to do and then all of a sudden it becomes real romantic love and then it becomes even real love in, in during the night and then he gets he dies the next day he's being burned his body is burned and she throws herself into the fire too and the two souls are going up completely wrapped around each other they go up into the sky and that's totally beautiful that's Goethe that's not real life <laughs> they wish though you know but no that's not and that's what why Elliot Roger declined that offer from his dad because he wants to be liked he wanted to be liked and I understand I I understand this isolation for people who can't really, they can't feel the public. They can't really feel their enjoyments and their affinities and their likes and dislikes. They can't, they can't identify with that. And, and that it's all these, then combined with the testosterone, of course, that makes them explode. But yeah, this combination, you know, of being isolated, of not being able to connect with other people, not understand anything they do or like. And I can totally identify with this. I, I can't identify with the snapping, but the snapping is caused by not doing any intro introspection, not having an event, and having a lot of testosterone and the urges that are building up so we women we don't have the testosterone that builds up and we don't 
we also don't sexualize things, everything like this. So for men, it, it gets very much sexualized, even though it isn't really meant as such, but it becomes sexualized physically. And then it causes this type of explosion of, of mind and uh, psychology and, and snapping and violence. So this can be avoided, that's why I wrote my book. I finished my book for Elliot Roger. I had no motivation before to finish it because I was like, I, I'm never going to find anyone who will publish this book. Uh, it is so out of the norm and it is pointing out so painfully to the deepest depths of our psychology. People don't want to deal with it. No publisher finds that appealing. The publisher goes, ouch, 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 that hurt. No, I thought I'd rather deal with something that is more splashing on the surface of things. It's, uh, it's easier going for my own eyes. So, yeah, and the book ended up, then finally ended up on Blogger with over 700 pages. And it's a good book. This I, th I think it's good. I haven't really revised it. I have only revised half of it. I have to do more work on it and see if everything is correct, if there's no typos in it. And towards the end, I have read some of the paragraphs several times, but I have to do just one more check check through and to see if everything is correct or if I needed to add maybe something to it. I'm also going to translate the book Betty that Annalise wrote about the therapy that she did with me when I was a child that had been translated into English and was on the market in the United States but it wasn't on the market for very long and, and I did not like the way it had been translated for several reasons. I'm not going to get into this now. So that was a long time. That was in the 70s when I was a child. So I am going to translate it again because nobody knows the book as well as I do. Nobody knows the story behind it as well as I do. And nobody knows what I really felt as a child, as I do today. So I am going to do it. Um, I have been stalling this for a while, but I'm going to do it. It's also hard to deal with my own book, my own story, but um, the the book News from Betty, the one I wrote, has my story only partly in it as more or less like an like a like a prototype example of what should not happen what should not have happened and how to prevent this from happening and my own experiences that i have collected over the years my own research that i have done all the books i have read all the stories I have heard, the therapies I have done, I've done so much. So I, I thought this is important for me to share that with other people. It always comes across as narcissistic, of course, to other people. But, you know, if we let ourselves be stopped by that idea, oh, it might come across as narcissistic, then we can't do anything. We can just bury ourselves in our rooms, right? So don't worry about narcissistic, do what you have to do, show yourself, and even if you love yourself, even if you like yourself on the video, that's a good thing, that's not a bad thing, and I applaud all the chubby ladies that are making videos, like just the other day I saw a girl in her 20s, beautiful woman, overweight, making videos and loving herself and telling others to love themselves as well. I applaud this, I support this 100%, and that's where it has to go, and and stop being anorexic, that's just uh, trying to feed into this same old peer pressure 
and uh, it doesn't do us any good. Do it doesn't help anybody to do this. It doesn't help you, it doesn't help the world, it doesn't help uh, people to get nourishing information. You know, it's anti-information, basically. It feeds into the same loop. And I know a woman who has died from anorexia. That woman grew up in this really fundamentalist Christian household and I, I saw her one time. She looked very withdrawn and shy and like a skeleton. I felt terribly sorry for her. She looked like she was afraid of us. And um, yeah, later on I heard that she starved herself but because she wanted to be thin, she wanted to fit in, she wanted to be elegant. And so, and I know that this this fundamentalist Christian upbringing was partly responsible for it. And so, if we have parents who nurture us, not just physically but also mentally, who give us what we need, then we can grow up believing in ourselves. We don't need to be fitting in into the society that we are surrounded with. We can be ourselves, you know. We can always find some other people who hang out at the margin, who are not popular. So, and that's what I always have done. I always stuck with those that were not popular right away, just because I felt more comfortable with them. And they were always more humble and I've always liked people's looks that it, it was always out of the, the norm. So what I liked, what I preferred in, in terms of taste for clothes or for looks or for the way I like men or the way I like dogs or horses. I always liked the, the, the ones that were not the Barbie that there were not like I never went for the Arab horses I went for the the draft horses the really big guys the Belgian Brabants those are the ones that I would want to have no other horse this is for me it's very crystal clear it's only the Belgian Brabant and also I would only put my weight on a Belgian Bra Brabant because I weigh over 200 pounds. I haven't weighed myself in a while. I think I'm like 220 or something, but I'm tall, so it's not, I'm not morbidly obese. I'm just a bit chubby overweight. And so that is what I would do. I would ride a Brabant and I would ride him without a saddle, without all this, you know, tying the, the belly up with these terrible belt. So I'm not doing that. I would never do this and I would just, and I would use a halter without a mouthpiece and I would let him eat and I would let him walk and run and do whatever he wants to do, you know. I would wa just wander, mosey around the environment with him. And I would lay down on the back all the way. I would lay myself back and have my head on his butt. And I'd let him eat and be peaceful and use him as a as an expensive furniture. <laughs> furniture that I really love and that I and I love this big fat furniture and the, where the spinal cord is like inside like embedded into the back where you don't see the spinal cord it's the, the the muscles and the tissue and the fat is is like a couple inches higher than the than the spinal cord that's what I love and it feels good and it's comfortable and and they don't mind you know if they like you they don't mind that but he also Brabants they don't like to carry anything heavier than that so yeah if I was heavier than I am I would not ride any horse I could not do it I I wouldn't want to burden 
the horse. The, they have to carry their own weight already. And I recommend to everybody to never, ever load up a horse or pony with more than the, that they can carry. So a little pony can only carry a rabbit, for example. Shouldn't even have a child on him. And so the Iceland horse, my mother has an Iceland horse. I would never sit on an Iceland horse. They're way too, too fragile for that. And so, yeah, maybe only a small child can ride on an Iceland horse. That would work, but not an adult. Yeah, so back to the situation with the dating. Um, if anybody wants to date or find a, a girlfriend, I saw a real touching sweet film yesterday on the internet. Somebody made this, this beautiful animation of a lonely guy and he had this big nose and, and it reminded me a little bit of the elephants that are lonely and reminded me right away again uh, of that baby elephant that was going to be separated and just I cried so hard when I saw that film I was so so sobbing but it was good it was a good crying because I felt like all that was coming out finally that that incredible grief and all of this this sorry feeling and all the sorry feeling for myself and all of this that was washing out and it felt really good so yeah I feel very sorry for myself sometimes but that's just part of my story basically you know so but anybody who wants to meet a woman I recommend, if you're too shy to go up to her, paint her, make her a drawing, paint her something, or make her a, a beautiful f photograph, go photograph something beautiful, a flower, and give that to her, and write a note or something. Make her feel like you really like her. Make her feel like you appreciate her. If you don't do this, she won't know she will not feel appreciated and she will think that you don't care about her. So it is very important to make these girls know that you like them or there will no never be any connection at all. And if they reject you, then go to another one and try it with another one. You know, keep trying, you know, c and, and don't raise up your expectation too high, you know, don't reach for the stars right away. Reach for your next door neighbor or for someone, a colleague at work or at school, you know, or take someone who's chubby or take someone who is more alone. Someone who doesn't already have a bunch of guys after her and um, so don't don't be too picky you know that's we knew somebody who was extremely picky he ended up committing suicide because of this because all the girls that he chose he was over 50 and they were in their 20s and that guy Gary Allen he really didn't look good and he didn't even make anything of himself so and he had no social skills so and he didn't even I bet he didn't even really connect with them so it was it was more like a demand and women shy away from that too when somebody comes up to them and kind of like has a demanding attitude about it you know. like they need it or like they and then they feel used they feel like they're just being used like a tool or something and that's not what we want we want to really connect with that other person we want to we have this union, this connection, this this eye level connection. Not just use somebody to feel proud of themselves, or not just um, you know use the other person for their needs and, and urges, and not just use the other person as as a some kind of confirmation and acknowledgement for one's value. That's what I said in the beginning. We need to get away from 
from the need for acknowledgement. You know, we need to find that within ourselves. That's very important. So if we want to connect, we have to do something. If we can't go directly up to the person, we will write something nice to them that shows our appreciation. There's somebody right now I like very, very much. I don't know if he likes me too, and he probably doesn't, and it's probably not good for me either to tell him that I like him, but I do it because I feel so strongly about it. I just, I feel such extreme appreciation for him being in this world. And I need to show that. For me, this is very important. And I wish everybody could do this. Take care.